All right, I saw we're starting now. Is that what's happening? Okay. All right, so first of all, let, let me just review the Feynman rules for QED. Well, let me say what they are. Um, first of all, what's the Lagrange density? It's minus a quarter F mu nu F mu nu um, plus psi bar I gamma mu D mu plus I E A mu minus M and E if we're talking about electrons, psi, there. That's about it. Um, the convention here is that E is positive, and the current here, J mu, is minus E psi bar gamma mu psi. We saw that it was conserved before. OK, now, um, let me see if I can. With F mu nu, there is always um, potential for a sign error, so let me just remind you what the notation here is for that. It's uh, D mu A nu. So F mu nu here is D mu A nu minus D mu A nu. Um, I think for pedagogical reasons we should avoid unnecessary use of Greek because we're not Greek, uh, most of us at least. Um, and, uh, but unfortunately I get sucked into it because it's just so universal. All right, so now what are these um, Feynman rules? The I'm going to go over here where the board is a higher quality board. So let's imagine we've got some process. We draw the diagram, and it's got some outgoing particles, P prime on outgoing electrons, outgoing positrons, outgoing photons. And in here, there are vertices like that. And then uh, somewhere there'll be a propagator from one vertex to another, uh, say K, and there'll be a, uh, an electron propagator like that. And then there'll be incoming electrons, incoming positrons, uh, incoming photons, and for some reason we keep the index on these. So what do we do? Well, first of all, of course, you, 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 you draw all the Feynman diagrams that are relevant to the process you're looking at. And then with each of these outgoing things, you associate for First prime rules get good choice. <laughs> um, U bar P prime S prime. So that's for an outgoing electron. For an outgoing positron, it's Q, it's B of uh, Q prime S prime. And for an outgoing photon, it's E star mu of K prime. I guess. Okay. For a vertex, what you put in is minus I E gamma mu. Um, for a photon line, minus I eta mu nu over k squared plus I epsilon. For this line, and that's only for the Coulomb gauge and a conservative. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the deal is you quantize in the Coulomb gauge, you 
you have the uh, instantaneous potential, you then have that miserable propagator, and then you realize that you can replace the miserable propagator with a nice propagator if you ignore the Coulomb, instantaneous Coulomb interaction. So that's, that's the deal. Um, it sounds like um, a Faustian bargain, but it's actually correct. Do any of these other, like does this vertex thing you add depend on that at all? No. Okay. All right. Now, this propagator is um, I P slash plus M over P squared minus M squared plus I epsilon. And then finally, these incoming ones. An incoming electron is UPS, otherwise known as Big Brown. An incoming positron. Why is, why is that? <laughs> That's actually an interesting story. Um, v bar of Q and S, I'll, I'll get to it in a second. And then the incoming photon is, F, is the polarization F vector epsilon U of K. Okay. So that's the whole thing. These quantities give us something called I M, and the um, actual uh, S matrix element is <coughs> two pi to the fourth delta fourth of all of the outgoing minus the incoming four momentum times I M. Okay. There are more minor defining rules, though, that are really just sort of caveats. Namely, watch out for minus signs because there are fermions in the theory. And um, that's probably it for quantum molecular dynamics. For other theories where you have phi to the fourth or phi cubed, then you have to watch out for combinatorial factors. And the original way in which I did these S matrix computation by actually expanding e to the minus the time order product of e to the minus i integral interaction Hamiltonian d fourth x. That way, if you expand that carefully and keep track of everything, you get the combinatorial factors right and you get the minus signs right. If you're careful, the minus signs were right last time um, on Wednesday. Um, Okay, so let's, oh, the big brown. It turns out that um, UPS is a well-managed company in which the management actually cares about the employees. And um, when they bought out a company in, in um, New York that uh, was a competitor, they kept all the employees. And the person who ran, loaned the company was so grateful that he named his racehorse Big Brown, which was the, 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 the sort of verbal acronym of UPS because they've been driving around in Big Brown trucks for 50 or 60 years. And um, turns out the horse won one of the derbies. But um, anyway, that's the story. The, 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 well, my understanding is that UPS is related to FedEx the way Costco is related to Walmart. And, uh, so basically, use UPS, <laughs> shop at Costco, and ignore the All right, so, um, Donald Trump will get sued. But anyway, um, Okay, so now, uh, th so those are the Feynman rules, and you see the, 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 one of the rules is watch out for minus signs, and it's, you know, keep track of combinatorial factors, and, and there's, there's no, there's no really neat way to, to, to do that one. But now we're going to uh, apply these to E plus E minus goes to mu plus mu minus. Let's see, was there a question? Was a question, why Big Brown? I guess that's worth a anger. <laughs> <laughs> With you, right? All right. 
Um, these S's on the bottom could potentially be different, right? I mean, oh, of course. Absolutely. I should have called it T. No, I don't want it. No, you're hungry. I don't want it. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> okay, the interaction <laughs> Hamiltonian here, which we might as well just call V of X, in this particular case is minus E psi bar for the electron, gamma mu psi electron A mu, but then it's also minus E psi bar mu on a mu, well, gamma mu. Psi mu on a, well, obviously we want to call that mu there. Uh, otherwise, it just looks silly. So, this again is a problem. I mean, it's perfectly all right to use mu for the muon, but we'd be better off if, well, I, I don't know, on the fly, I don't know, if we switch to Latin letters. But it's, it's a good idea. The fine diagram, luckily, is only one because it's the electron comes in, positron comes in, and I'm following here the Peskin Schroeder uh, uh, computation. And so I'm using there K nu, K prime. Okay, so that's the Feynman diagram. So why can't I have the other type where I have electron, positron, and then a photon between, and then mu one? Because there isn't any vertex electron, muon, photon. No, okay. See, we have muon, muon, photon, electron, uh, electron, uh, photon. All right, that's a great. That was a great question. Um, certainly worth the candy. <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> All right. Okay, so this is simpler then than the one we did, Baba, which is called Baba scattering, by the way. E plus E minus goes E plus E minus with Baba scattering. Is it is it possible that if there's another is it possible that there could be another term in the interaction Hamiltonian that had a vertex like that? Or does that never happen? You mean a mu E photon? Yeah. Great question. Um, I think, I mean, that's an experimental issue, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but I mean, I could write down a, a term of that. Yeah, term. you could write down a term. It would right? be Lorentz invariant, gauge invariant, and so forth. Um, and um, So is it the case that experimentally well, that's... Well, all right. What, excuse me? Is it the case that experimentally that's not observed? Well, that's for sure. Okay. Is experimentally, are these coupling constants in front of each of them known to be exactly Experimentally, the same? experimentally, they're known to, with an experimental error to be the same. Uh -huh. Well, uh, something closely related to your question there occurs if... Um, occurs when we bring in uh, quarks or we bring in uh, the neutrinos as well as the charged leptons. And in those cases, what you do is you want, to, you want the quadratic Hamiltonian to be diagonal. And so you want the basic fields in which you do perturbation theory to be uh, eigenstates of mass. And then you just take what you get in the interactions after you've done that. And in the case of neutrinos, what you've got then is with uh, W's and Z's, you've got various things like E and various news here. So you have funny vertices. OK, well, if we apply the Feynman rules to this diagram, um, things work out perfectly. There's no extra minus sign. And we get that IM is equal to, well, we have a, um, let's look down here. We have a U coming in. So we have U of P and S. Then we have a vertex. So 
So we put in minus I E down mu. And then we have an incoming positron, and that gives us a V bar. So we have V bar of P prime S prime. So in this case, well, our Q, T. Anyway, P prime, S prime. So we've done this part. Now we've got a photon propagator, and that's this. And so we have um, minus I, uh, eta, mu nu, over K squared. And in, in this particular case, we know what K is. It's P plus P prime. Uh, and you can put in a minus i epsilon, but it doesn't matter. It's on the tree level diagram like this. A diagram without a loop is in the trade called a tree level diagram. Those are the kind that you'll grow to love. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't have to be complicated. All right, now we've got this situation here where we've got an outgoing electron, so that's u bar. And uh, it will be K, I guess, uh, okay, KR, R is the index that he was using. So SS prime R, a vertex minus I E. And now we have to use gamma nu. We, we, when I said mu here, it's, done, it's not that you fixate on the on mu. It's just one of the gamma matrices. And, um, then you've got an outgoing positron, so that's a V of K prime R prime. And that's the whole thing. So obviously, um, once you get good at doing Feynman diagrams, using Feynman rules is, you know, it saves easily 15 minutes of fussing around with the you know, with the interaction times on you, moving the fields around, keeping track of the minus sign. And if you're dealing with a process where there's only one diagram, then you don't have to worry about the relative sign because it goes away when you take the absolute value. All right, well. What absolute value are we talking about? Well, this thing is an amplitude. This S matrix thing is an amplitude. Me. You get a probability, you take the absolute value squared. Um, now you see what you've got is you've got three minus i e's, which gives you all together i e squared. So this thing is i e squared v bar p e prime s prime gamma mu u, not u bar, sorry, p s. And now this eta mu nu is just going to lower this nu and make it a mu. So this is then u bar of kr gamma lower mu v of k prime r prime. And down here, um, we can call it p plus p prime squared um, if you want. It, it, it uh, doesn't really matter. OK, so that's, our, that's what i m is. And s is 2 pi to the fourth energy momentum conserving delta function times I m. So is there still an extra alpha or beta label on the v's and the u's? Yes. So then those things are just numbers, right? I mean, if I fix alpha or beta? Right. So what, we, what we've got here, you see, is v, say, a, a, b, b. And then over here, we've got maybe Alpha, alpha, beta, beta. Okay, that's how it looks. So now I can just move everything around to however I want. Absolutely, you yeah. And you want to do that at a certain point. So let me let's um, see that what we're going to need is m squared. And so we need to know how to deal with something like that. So let's look at something that's V bar gamma mu u. We're going to need to take the conjugate of that. 
which, in, uh, which of course is a sum, A, A, B, B. But this thing is already a little bit complicated. In other words, it's actually V star A, gamma zero A, B, gamma mu B, C, U, C, star. But if we go back to matrix notation, this thing is uh, V dagger gamma zero gamma mu u, and now we're taking the complex conjugate. So this is u dagger gamma mu dagger gamma zero dagger V in matrix notation. Now, um, Gamma zero is zero, one, one, zero. And gamma vector is zero sigma minus sigma zero. So gamma zero is equal to gamma zero adjoint. But gamma is minus gamma adjoint because the big sigmas are Hermitian, but there's a minus sign here. Transpose. <laughs> All right, so that means that this thing is u dagger, gamma mu dagger, gamma zero, v. Now, we have these various computation relations which define the gamma matrices, namely gamma a, gamma b, anti-commutator which is to say gamma A, gamma B, plus gamma B, gamma A, is 2 A to A, B. And so that means that gamma 0 commutes with gamma 0. Obviously, gamma 0 commutes with gamma, anything commutes with itself. So gamma 0 commutes with gamma 0, but um, Gamma i uh, anti-commutes with gamma zero because if you have an i and a zero here, you get zero on the right-hand side, so they anti-commute with each other. So the one, so for gamma zero, where you don't get a minus sign from the dagger, you can just move the gamma zero through, or just leave it there because it's just gamma zero. When it's gamma i, you get a minus sign, but then you move the gamma zero through and you get another minus sign. So altogether, this is equal to u dagger gamma zero gamma mu v, which is equal to u bar gamma mu v. So this thing that, we're, that we started with, v bar gamma mu u, is actually real. It, it's real in the, well, I shouldn't have said it's real. It, under complex conjugation, it just goes into u bar gamma mu v, which is a very nice property, which is why people have stuck the gamma zero in there so many times. Why we deal with psi bar and u bar rather than psi dagger and u dagger. The bar makes life much easier. This is a little clearer in the notes, which I should have followed, I guess. All right, so let's let's look at um, the initial the electron spinner part of this thing when we take the absolute value squared. So what we'll have is v bar gamma mu u absolute value squared, and so this is v e bar gamma mu u complex conjugate v e bar gamma mu u and we just saw that was u bar gamma mu v v e bar gamma mu u now uh, you see this is a very nice structure here because v v bar is the thing that if you sum over the uh, two spin states, you get um, a nice uh, p slash minus m, or in this case, p prime slash minus m. 
So what we do is uh, if we're going to be what we're, we're going to do is we're going to well let's put it this way if we don't sum over the spins this is complicated. Now there are computer programs that deal with with that do a lot of the a lot of uh, mechanical work in final diagrams, and uh, if you ever do a thesis involving serious Feynman diagrams, you probably want to use them. But um, what we want to do is just look at the ordinary experimental situation in which you normally don't have polarized beams coming in, and you normally don't detect the polarization going out. So we're going to average over the incoming spins and sum over the final state spins in, of m squared. And uh, so that means that we just divide by 4 and sum over all the spins. So this thing, so we're going to be able to sum over that and get uh, our, uh, our expression. And what we're going to have then for m squared, inside m squared, uh, what we're going to have then is this, u bar gamma mu v, v bar gamma mu u, and then the muon part is going to be v prime bar gamma, uh, let me get this one, actually, uh, yeah, I, I mean, this was true here, but let me, let me, let me do this thing in a little more um, let's let's go to the thing that we actually have here. So what we've got is V bar gamma mu u, u bar prime gamma mu v prime star. In other words, this is this whole amplitude. In other words, it's um, u bar gamma mu v, v bar gamma mu u. And then that times its complex, its complex conjugate times itself. And so then we then have v bar gamma nu u, u bar prime gamma nu v prime. So that's what we wind up with. And that then gives us u bar gamma mu v, v prime bar gamma lower mu u prime, v bar gamma nu u, u bar prime gamma nu v prime. And now we move these things um, around so that we get u bar gamma mu v v bar gamma nu u v bar prime gamma mu u prime u bar prime gamma nu v prime. So is it the case that each of these sets of three u it's gamma v or it's, it's is it true that each of these sets of three things Spinner, gamma, spinner, yeah. commutes with another construction. Oh, yeah, these are just numbers now. It's just complex numbers. Okay. Okay. This yeah. is a four vector, a four yeah. by four matrix, a four vector. Well, four vector, four component vector, not a four vector. Mm -hmm. And in other words, this thing, v bar gamma mu u, u bar gamma mu v. That's this thing, but with mu replaced by nu. This is the complex conjugate of that thing, but we're summing over nu here, and we have to just you have to use two different letters because they're independent sums. Okay, so it's the sum over nu times the complex conjugate of that, but in this case we use a different we use a mu. And um, so then I just 
apply the complex conjugation to these two guys. And then you want to have the VB bar together, so you just move these like that. And now you've got projection on when you sum, you've got a projection operator there, uh, you've got a projection operator here. And now what we're going to do is, well, let me, let me follow my notes clearly. Let's just look at the sum over SS. We're just looking at the electron part. So we're looking at this part. So what do we have? We have U bar alpha of P and S, gamma mu alpha beta, V beta of P prime S prime, V bar A of V prime S prime, gamma nu AB, UB of P and S. And we're summing over S and S prime. But before doing that, well, we are doing that. Uh, this is gamma nu alpha beta, V beta, P prime S prime, V bar, Uh, a, P prime, S prime, gamma, nu, A, B, U, B, P, S, U bar, alpha, P, S. Okay. And now we can go to, we can, we can say that V beta, V bar A summed over S prime, well, this is P prime slash minus M. And then over here, UB, U bar alpha summed over S is P slash plus M. So this is averaging over initial polarization yes. of the two, two particles? Right. So if it was the case that if one had, say, a definite spin and the other one had a definite spin, oh. wouldn't you get simplifications? Because there'd be lots no. of zeros. There wouldn't be zeros that, in places? It's worse. It's worse? Yeah, it's terrible. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't it's not terrible. Be grateful. <laughs> but, you know, with computers, once you've got a Debug computer program. And I think CERN has something called a group, which probably allows you to do it. All right, so what do we have? This thing then is actually gamma mu alpha beta p prime slash minus m beta alpha gamma nu ab p slash plus m. B alpha. But this is a trace. And traces are your friend. They're not as good as delta functions, but they're pretty good. So this is the trace of gamma mu P prime slash minus N. Gamma nu P slash plus N. I tell you, I don't know if I told you this story, but I, when I was a first year graduate student, I missed the class of Schwinger's quantum mechanics. And I came back and um, I saw this on the board in many places. And he hadn't yet introduced H bar when I, before I missed the class. And I came back and I thought, gee, he brought in H bar. He's using it in a very funny way. And I finally <laughs> realized it was a trace. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've done the incoming spinners. At least we've reduced them to a trace. The outgoing ones, what do they look like? Well, the outgoing ones are U bar 
gamma-mu V evaluated in K and R and K prime R prime times the complex conjugate of that. So is it true that this looks like a trace times another trace to me? Is it true that those things no, this that, is a trait. This is that with the, that top line there, right? Because it's summed over beta, but the other one's summed over B. So it looks like one trace. You know, you know, you are absolutely right, and I think there's an error here in my notes. Gamma, beta, and then one trace multiplied by another trace. Is that beta, true? beta, 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 trace beta, 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 trace beta. Trace yeah, all right. There's a, there's no. a it's not true. Beta A. Ah, this is beta A. Okay. It's beta A. Then we have gamma A B. <laughs> then this thing is B alpha, and then there's an alpha. So now it looks like it. Now it's the way you want it, right? Alpha beta, beta A, A B, B alpha summed over everything. So it's the total trace. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, brilliant. I wonder if my notes are actually going to Well, I'll check them. All right, so let's do the outgoing ones. Now we have a sum over R and R prime. And we have V bar, R, V bar, K prime, R prime, gamma mu, U of K and R, U bar of K and R, gamma nu, V of K prime R prime. So that's what happens when you take the absolute value squared of uh, this. And so now I, I'll, I'll just skip to the answer. You, you want me to go through it in detail, or do you want me to just skip to the answer? It's pretty similar to this one, right? Yes. Then skip to the answer. Trace gamma mu k slash plus m mu. Now this, of course, was m e, because these were electrons coming in. This is now muons going out. So that's what it is. Okay. So one quarter sum over S S prime R R prime of M squared is then, well, what is there in M apart from these uh, spinners and gamma matrices? There's an E squared and what um, uh, Pestman Schroeder called Q, which is Q plus B squared. So when we square it, we get E to the 4 over 4 Q to the 4 where Q is P plus P prime. Um, and then we have a product of two traces. A trace of P prime slash minus ME, gamma nu, P slash plus ME, gamma mu, times trace of K slash plus M mu, down a new k prime slash minus and mu down a new. Okay. Now we're going to make a slight simplification by um, ignoring me. Me is less than mu by a factor of 200. And um, it turns out that, um, as Peskin Schroeder point out, that the higher order terms, in other words, diagrams like, uh, well, let's see, maybe I'll do that here. Diagrams like um, 
12 a vertex here. I mean, a, a, an extra photon there, or um, let's see, one, yeah. one. Well, I'm in trouble thinking of extra things. I mean, obviously, you can have one here. Um, Anyway, all sorts of other diagrams that could occur. Um, uh, have a loop in here. Oh, I wonder if it's going to be. P prime nu minus E nu nu E P prime times P prime U A nu plus A nu. K prime nu minus A mu nu K K prime plus M mu squared. Now this 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 thing contracts in a very nice way because P prime u uh, sum with K prime lower mu is just P prime K prime, and similarly you get P K and so forth. And when you do this, if I skip a step, which is in the notes, you get a e to the fourth over, let me write it as p plus p prime to the fourth, just to remind you. What you get is pk, p prime k prime, plus pk prime, p prime k, plus mu squared, pp prime. So that's the... That's, that's what it boils down to. The next step is to pick, um, is to pick nice, uh, a nice coordinate system and the natural coordinate system for a process where you have uh, two particles of the same mass is the center of the mass system or the center of momentum system. And so in that case, you pick, and in fact, these E plus E minus experiments are often done with colliding beams. So the center of mass, the center of momentum system is actually the lab frame. Uh, so P is then equal to E, the energy of the of each in initial particle, initial electron or positron, one Z hat, P prime is E times 1 minus Z hat. The final muon, say, is uh, E times, well, one could say 1 K hat, but it makes more sense to just say E K. And uh, K prime, then, is E minus K. And uh, k dot z hat is just length of k times cosine theta, k being the momentum of the point of u on. And then you have the Minkowski product pk is the same thing as p prime k prime, and this is e squared minus e k cos theta. p k prime is the same thing as p prime k, and that is e squared plus e k cos theta. So these things are quite symmetrical. And this whole thing then, up there, is then equal to uh, 8 e to the fourth over 16 e to the fourth, the e's being different. Uh, big E squared, E minus K cos theta squared plus E squared, E plus K cos theta squared plus 2M mu squared, E squared. And it turns out that that can be remarkably simplified to just E to the fourth 
times 1 plus m u squared over e squared plus 1 minus m u squared over e squared times cosine squared over theta. Okay, so the whole thing is boiled down to an expression that's remarkably simple. Um, now the issue is uh, the whole, doing the whole. Is, other, is, do I owe chocolate to anybody? All right. The next thing is to do the hocus pocus having to do with uh, going from the amplitude to the uh, cross section. It should be hyphenated. All right, we want to go from S to P sigma D omega. Well, our S is I M times 2 pi to the fourth, delta fourth, and I'll do it for the particular process at hand, which is um, the most important case, where you have two particles going to two particles. First of all, we have to deal with the norms. Our states in Peskin Schroeder notation are 2EP, a dagger of, well, P and S on the back here if you want it. And we remember the anti commutation relations. A A dagga is 2 pi cubed delta cubed of P minus P prime. And so the actual norm. EP for a given S is 2 EP 2 pi cubed, because we need an A and an A dagger, delta cubed of zero, effectively. So this is the norm of these states. This is all in the, this is all the online tonight. Now, what is delta cubed of zero? Well, delta cubed of P is integral dqp 2 pi q. This is once again <coughs> good old Mr. Durack. Whoops, well it's dqx. Now if you said p equal to 0, this is just the integral of 1, so this is just v over 2 pi q. So delta of 0 is effectively v over 2 pi q, so this is altogether 2ev. So the norms of one of our states is 2EB. And so the first thing to do is to convert these, the, the, the probability into a probability for unit norm states. So we're going to be dividing by the norm, one factor of this for each incoming particle and one factor of that for each outgoing particle. In this particular case, we have two in, two out, and so... So why did we choose this weird normalization to begin with? Why did we choose the good one that gave well, us the... Yeah, well, because when you're dealing with the Feynman, I, when you're dealing with the Feynman diagrams, this pest control notation is nice. And I have to admit that their, their Feynman diagram notation is nice. Um, their metric is better for particle physics. You avoid eyes in the gamma matrices, and um, the propagators look better, and p squared, which looks positive, is positive if it's on the measure, and so forth. So there are good things about their notation. I even kind of like this. And um, all right, so we take s and we divide by the appropriate uh, norms, and so we get a probability. Our probability then is S squared divided by 2E, uh, by, I'll just write it as 2EVs, all of them, for all the initial and final state particles. And this will turn out to be, of course, the M squared that we've been talking about, suitably summed and averaged. 2 pi to the fourth, Delta fourth 
of incoming and outgoing momenta, but then it's going to be a second factor of 2 pi to the fourth delta. But 2 pi cubed delta cubed is just V, and 2 pi delta of E is just T. So this is just VT. What is T? The time, it's around 14 billion years. Um, in other words, it's the infinite time. We put the universe in a space-time box of size V and length T. And then we're dividing by 2EV. Okay. And for this particular case, where we have four of them, we then have m squared, 2 pi to the fourth, delta fourth, I'll leave out the sums, vt over the two e's, v to the fourth. Well, obviously, the probability divided by t is the rate, and so we get rid of the t, we cancel this, and this becomes a 3. The rate now is some sort of a, what I'll call a sigma tilde times a flux, the flux of incoming particles. And the flux is just V, the relative velocity, divided by the volume. All right. So now, our sigma tilde is then R over F. And this is then m squared. Let me follow the notes. 2 pi to the fourth delta 2 e's v, v cubed little v v because I've divided by f. And now this V brings us down to V squared. What is little V the velocity of? Yeah. Little V is the relative velocity, and so in this case, little V is 2. Okay. Actually, I should check that. It's 2 1. Um, it's V1 minus V2, and so I think it's 2. So it's the relative velocity of the two incoming particles in the center of momentum. Right, 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 right. And um, okay. anyway, let's get let's get on with this. Um, now this uh, sigma tilde, to get a real cross-section, we have to sum over the final states. Now remember, what, how, what, is, what are the final states? Well, you take the phase space volume, which is a volume and momentum space times a volume and position space, and you divide by Planck's constant cubed, and that gives you the number of states. Well, in natural units, when h bar is 1, uh, little h is 2 pi. Plus 1 is h over 2 pi. OK. So this, then, is momentum volume, physical volume, divided by 2 pi cubed. Okay. So we multiply by them. And so, all right, let's some of these. Uh... Oh my god, we're at the end of the hour. Yeah. All right, well, I'll duplicate this at the beginning of the next hour. But since, since we're at the, the very end, let me just go maybe one minute over. So d sigma, then, is sigma tilde the case of two outgoing particles, in this case, v cubed kv, 
over two pi q dq k prime v over two pi q. And so all together then it's m squared uh, over two pi to the fourth, two pi squared. Uh, the product of the two e's, v, delta fourth of k plus k prime minus p minus p prime, dq k, dq k prime. And this corresponds to 4.79 in Peskin Schroeder. Notice what happens. The v's go away. If they were still there, we'd be very good. Um, now, if we had done this more generally, again, for two particles in the initial state, which is almost always the case, but we might have had a more complicated final state. In that case, we would have had to divide by as many of the two EVs as there are in the all, counting all external lines, all the initial lines and all the final lines. But then, going, summing over final state particles, we would have to have more of these dq k v's and all of these would cancel. So that's basically uh, that and I'll, I'll start next time at, at this point and I'll, I'll just review this so that the person who left doesn't miss anything. So we can Turn this off.